Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here who is quite exhausted after today's leg day and also has a very interesting integral for us to evaluate. How is my exhaustion related to the evaluation of this integral? Absolutely no idea. They are completely unrelated. I just wanted to solve this integral and then share it with you guys. So yeah. W's in the chat, whatever that means. I'm not familiar with Gen Z slang and all that kind of stuff. I'm old. Anyway, so we have the integral from 1 to E of log gamma 1 minus log x divided by x dx. So, it looks like we could use the substitution here that is letting log x here equal to u, which implies that 1 by x dx equals du. And as x tends to 1, we have u tending to log 1, which is 0. And as x tends to e, we have u tending to log e, which is 1, which implies that i here is the integral from 0 to 1 of log gamma 1 minus u du, which looks slightly more hospitable, but the problem is there is still a log gamma thingy over here, and how exactly do we want to deal with this? Well, and given the structure of our integral, we're integrating from 0 to 1, and the argument of the gamma function is 1 minus u. So, by virtue of symmetry, a substitution here seems quite useful. It could open up new avenues for solution development. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that what I'm about to do might work. We're going to let 1 minus u equal to t, which implies that negative du here equals dt, and as u approaches 0, we have t approaching 1. And as t approaches 1, we have u approaching 0. So the limits are switched up. And we have i here equal to negative sign because of the differential element. Integral 1 to 0 of log gamma t dt. Now, of course, we can switch up the limits of integration and get rid of this extra negative sign. So we have integral 0 to 1 log gamma t dt. And, of course, whatever you call the dummy variable doesn't matter. So we could rename this as the integral from 0 to 1 of log gamma u du. So we know that we have this form for the integral i, but we also have this equivalent form for the integral i. So we could add them up. And by that case, by that token, that is, my English is not Englishing today, we have 2 times i equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of log gamma u plus log gamma 1 minus u du. And of course, we know that adding logarithms results in a logarithm of the product. So we have integral 0 to 1 log gamma u times gamma 1 minus u du. And this is pretty useful because we have a beautiful formula that is Euler's reflection formula that I just love spamming whenever possible relating gamma z and gamma 1 minus z. So we have gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equal to pi times the cosecant of pi times z. Okay, cool. So this implies that i here equals 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of log pi times the cosecant of pi times u du. And of course, I could have just written it as pi z and then dz. Again, the name of the dummy variable doesn't matter whatsoever. Again, using the properties of the logarithm, we can break this down into a couple of integrals now. Now we have one half the integral from 0 to 1 of log pi du plus an integral from 0 to 1 of log Wait a minute, we have log cosecant, which would be negative log sine. So we have minus integral 0 to 1 log sine of pi times u du. Now the first integral is pretty straightforward. That is just log pi times 1. So we have 1 half of log pi minus 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of log sine pi u du. And now we just need to transform this integral into something more familiar. And we can do that starting with a transformation that is letting pi times u equal z, which implies that du equals 1 over pi dz. 
And this implies that the target integral i equals one half of log pi minus one half of, wait, we have one over two pi and the limits would now be zero and pi. And we have log sine z dz, which is of course very similar to Euler's log trig integral, but the upper limit is replaced is instead of pi by two, we have pi. Okay, cool. So let's play around a bit more with symmetry. So we have one half of log pi, terribly sorry about that, one half of log pi minus one over two pi. And we have the integral from zero to pi by two plus the integral from pi by two to pi of log sine z dz. And again, we just need one more neat little transformation where we Let's revert, let's revert back to blue, where we let z here equal to pi minus some fancy variable, let's call it zeta, which means that dz here is just negative d zeta. And what about the limits? Well, zeta would be pi minus z. So we have i here equal to one half of log pi minus 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine z dz. And we have a negative sign because of the differential element. The lower limit here would be pi minus pi by 2, which is pi by 2. Upper limit would be 0. And we have log sine zeta d zeta. Terribly sorry about that. No, that looks even worse. I need to give myself some writing space. And the logs don't look too good today either. Anyway, it's fine. My handwriting is never improving anyway. It'll only get worse probably. So we have these two integrals. And of course, this thing is exactly the same as this thing. If we switch up the limits of integration, introducing an extra negative sign, which cancels out the one outside. So this implies that i here equals one half of log pi minus 1 over 2 pi times 2 times the integral from 0 to 0, I mean integral 0 to, to pi by 2 of log sine z dz, which we recognize as Euler's famous log trig integral, that is negative pi by 2 log 2. Okay, cool. So again, we have some nice cancellations. We have i here equal to 1 half of log pi minus two negatives canceling out, one over pi and pi cancel out as well. We're left with one half of log two. And of course, using the properties of the logarithm, we can compress all of the stuff to get the integral from zero to one of log gamma one minus x dx. I don't remember the form we started off with. I think, yeah, it was one minus log x divided by x equals quite nicely log root 2 pi. Quite a beautiful result in need for this cute little integral with an adorable solution development. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do share the channel as well to promote its growth and smash that like button. Literally just smash it. Thank you. See you next time.